Welcome and God bless to everyone who just joined in. Thank you for watching. God bless you and your families. Let me know if my sound is loud and clear. Give me one in the text if you can hear me. So we will start today's live show. This is a test. This is a test. Thank you for the confirmation, guys. God bless. Hope everybody is doing fine. Today we're going to do another amazing live show, Lord willing. And the topic of today is the historical errors and contradictions in the Quran. Before we start, let us pray together in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, please forgive our daily sins and guide us to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us because we are followers of your holy Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies and deceptions. Enfold us in your arms, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might reflect your light within this dark world and that we speak your word with boldness and draw others to your feet. We ask this through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, loosen my tongue to speak the truth to our audience and please give me the courage today and always to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining in, guys. God bless you and your families. On this live broadcast, as we said, we will have the opportunity to talk about the historical disasters and contradictions in the Quran. Last but not least, like always, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat in the end about today's topic or any question that you feel need to be answered. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer as far as I can. Hopefully, we will have also Muslim guests who will call us live on Skype when we are done teaching so we can have a nice and respectful discussion. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian, the Rob Christian without separation. Let us start today's live show. I hope everyone is hearing me correctly. I hope that my sound is loud and clear, Lord willingly. So today is this topic, the historical errors and the contradictions in the Quran. How many people believe uh, who are listening in the live chat or who are just watching? Do you really believe that there are historical errors and contradictions in the Quran? Hopefully we will have Muslims who will say no. And if you say no, today that's going to be a really difficult challenge for Rob Christian to show you those historical errors and contradictions in the Quran. Today we're going <laughs> to refute the Muslim claims, the Islamic claim that the Quran is from God. I mean, Muslims, here's the one million dollar question. According to you, the Quran is from God. The only true God that you call Allah. If Allah is truly God, this is the question. If Allah is truly God, he cannot make mistakes right so let us show you that actually allah is not god not the living god of our holy bible god of abraham isaac and jacob he's actually a false god who was adopted into islam as the pre-islamic moon idol called allah let us start if we go to the quran and we go to chapter 26 chapter ashura Ayah 173, 173, we can read the following. And we reigned on them a reign of torment. And how evil was the reign of those who had been warned. Guys, if you read it like this, you will not answer what, uh, or basically you don't understand what is happening here. This is basically talking about the people of Lot, right? Lot, the people of Lot. Let me type it in the text of Lot, right? And here, basically, Allah is explaining how he dropped a rain of torment 
He is punishing the evil people of Lot, right? Now, if we go to another ayah of the Quran, if we go to another ayah of the Quran that is talking about the same story, we can find another ayah in chapter 54, Surah Al-Qamar, ayah 34. Verily, we sent upon them, on the people of Lot, a gravel storm, right? A gravel storm. So here Allah is saying rain of torment, here it's a gravel storm. And if we go to another ayah in chapter 54, ayah 34, Surah Al-Qamar, it says we unleashed upon them a storm of stones, a storm of stones. As for the believers of Lot's family, we delivered them before dawn. So only the family of Lot were saved, right? According to this ayah. And if we go to another ayah, you see how many times Allah needs to re repeat himself? I mean, Allah, we already know, man. You don't need to repeat. So in chapter 26, ayah 173, it says, When we rained on them a rain, so ill was the rain on those warned. And to another ayah, Al-Hijr, Chapter 15, Ayah 74, Chapter 15, Ayah 74, it says, And we turned the towns of Sodom and Palestine upside down and rained on them stones of baked clay. Now the question here is, the question here is this, How were the people of Lord punished, O Allah? Was it by heavy rain, by rain? Was it by baked clay? Was it by gravel storm? Or storm of stones. Huh? Allah. I mean, be more consistent, man. Be more specific. Was it rain? Was it bay clay? Or gravel storm? Was it maybe storm of stones? Was it like this? I mean, it's, it's talking about bay clay. So Allah was basically throwing from the heavens baked clay like this. Welcome uh, for the people who just joined in. So Allah was throwing baked jars. He was hurling them from the sky. I mean, Allah, again, how were the people of Lord punished? Can we just pick and choose, Allah? Can we just pick and choose? I mean, was it rain? Was it baked clay? Was it a gravel storm? Was it a storm of stones? Which one is it? I mean, if Allah, if Allah was truly God, he would have not kept contradicting himself and every time changing his mind and say something differently, right? This is clear contradictions. Was it baked clay? I mean, was it, was it like this? Were you throwing jars from the heavens? Baked clay? Was it maybe a storm of stone? I mean, Allah, come on, man. Muslim Imams will say, Allahu alam. Allah knows best. Right? Lord of mercy. Right? If we go <clears throat> about to know about the story of a man that is mentioned over and over and over in the Quran, guys. Who was Haman the Agagite in the Bible, guys? Who was Haman, the Agagite in the Bible. Who was he, basically? According to the Bible, guys, Haman, also known as Haman the Agagite or the Haman the Evil, is the main antagonist, the main bad guy, basically, in the book of Esther, who, according to the Hebrew Bible, was a visor in the Persian Empire under King Azarius traditionally identified as Xerxes the first, right? So according to the biblical historical story, it happened in the Persian Empire, right? Where the Jews were basically in exile in Persia and Haman was part of that story in Persia, right? In Persia. Now, if we go to the Quran, if we go to the Quran, we go to chapter 28, ayah 6, 
Chapter 28, Ayah 6, Al-Qassas, we can read the following. And to establish them in the earth and to show Pharaoh and Haman. Muslims, wait a second. Your Quran is talking about Pharaoh and Haman? That's not possible. Pharaoh lived in Egypt. Right, Muslims? And Haman lived in Persia. Uh-oh. So here we can basically conclude that Muhammad got history really mixed up. This is clearly a sign of a fake prophet who is fabricating ayahs, filling up the Quran with false historical claims. This is a huge, huge, a huge disaster for the Muslims. Your Quran is wrong about history. This is a false historical claim. How can Pharaoh and Haman be mentioned at the same time in the Quran? And you call this the book of Allah? Do you call this the book of God? How can God make this claim? Right? Read with me guys. The historical fact is that the biblical Haman that is mentioned in the book of Esther in the time of the Jews. He lived in the time of the Jews when they were living in exile in Persia. Right? And this is the correct historical fact. Under the rule of King Xerxes or also known as Azarius. But the Quran makes a huge error, a huge historical error. Which is the Quranic claim about Haman. It's basically in the time of Moses and Pharaoh. So Haman, the Quranic Haman, lives in the time of Moses and Pharaoh, but the real Haman, the real historical Haman, which is the biblical Haman, he lived in Persia. This one lives in, lives in Egypt, this one lives in Persia, do you see it? Uh oh, uh oh Muslims, you really need to think with me Muslims. How can, how can you call Allah God and how can you call the Quran the book of God? Well, your Quran made a huge, huge, huge historical mistake. This is not something easy, guys. This is big. This is huge. Right? Huge. Devastating error made by Allah. But we know in secret it is Muhammad who was fabricating these ayahs, right? Muslims? Did you catch it, guys? Are you still with me, guys? Are you still with me? You see the problem here? We just found another problem. A huge problem for the Muslims. And we always ask the Imams to answer this devastating mistake in the Quran. But they are always silent. They are hiding, unfortunately, in the bushes. They do not dare to answer this huge mistake. They don't dare to address this mistake. Right? And if we go <clears throat> to chapter 28, Al-Qassas again, Ayah 38, chapter 28, Ayah 38, it says, And Pharaoh said, O oh, chiefs, I know that you have a God other than me. So kindle for me a fire, O oh, Haman. So here, Pharaoh <laughs> is asking Haman to bake the mud and set up for me a lofty tower in order that I may serve the God of Moses. So here, Pharaoh, guys, pay attention. Pharaoh is asking and commanding Haman to make for him a tower, to build for him a very big tower, right? So that he can see the God of Moses. Did you catch it? Did you catch it, guys? Now, where did we hear this story from? Right? Where did we hear about a very large tower to see the God of the Bible? Aha, uh -huh, we find it again in the Bible. But here Muhammad is making a huge, huge mistake, right? This was in a really much earlier time, right? 
This was in the time of Nimrod, right? If you can read with me, this is chapter 11 of Genesis, Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel. This was the Tower of Babel, which was much earlier, right? Much earlier. Different time, different place, different period, right? So here it is talking about a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we make name for ourselves and otherwise will be scattered over the face of the earth. So here, you see it, if we continue, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building, the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. So they were basically trying to challenge God, to see God. So they started to build a tower, right? And then God made them speak all kind of languages. So the Bible is talking about the Tower of Babel, right? About the Tower of Babel, which, is, which was basically uh, in Mesopotamia. But the Quran is ordering Haman in the time of Moses. <laughs> this is in the time of Pharaoh and Moses. He's ordering his chief engineer, basically, to build for him a tower so that he will see the God of Moses. That's, that's really a false story. It's a scam. Did you catch it? That never happened in the time of Moses. No historical account, no historical story talks about this. So Muhammad basically heard it from there somewhere. It was somewhere uh, as a legend story to be told and he heard it. He must have heard it and he put it in the Quran. How can you make this mistake, right? How can you call Allah God well, Allah, we know it's Muhammad, making such mistakes in this book that you call the Quran, right? This is a huge historical mistake, right? Huge mistake. Right? This is the Tower of Babel, different period, different time, different place, and this is in the time of Moses, which makes no sense. Nowhere do we see this in any historical account. Muhammad must have sucked it out of his big thumb, right? And if we continue, we can basically conclude the Tower of Babel is a fact that we can find back in Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. And that there is nothing called Tower of Fear. Pharaoh, which is mentioned as we showed you in chapter 28, ayah 38. Can Allah be called God and make such huge historical errors? Certainly not. Allah is not God. Allah is nothing but a fabrication, imagination of Muhammad, right? When he created Islam. And if we continue, guys, if we go to chapter 4, Surat An-Nisa, chapter 4, ayah 157, we can read. And for their saying, who are those who are saying, these are the Jews. So Allah is quoting the Jews. Here the Jews are talking. Indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. Where did Muhammad get this idea from? Is this historically true? In fact, not. Let me show you where Muhammad actually got this from. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. He actually got it from the second treatise of the great Seth. This was, guys, a apocryphal Gnostic writing that is from the third century, right? It's a Gnostic writing written much later than the New Testament in the 3rd century, right? Much later than the Apostles of Jesus. So basically you had Gnostic people 
agnostic people writing a story trying to attack the crucifixion of Jesus. So the author is unknown and the Seth referenced in the title appears nowhere in the text. Instead, Seth is thought to reference the third son of Adam and Eve to whom Gnosis was first revealed. According to some agnostics, it's an opinion, right? No proof, nothing. The author appears to belong to a group <laughs> of Gnostics who maintain, now pay attention, they maintain, they believe, they that's their opinion without any proof, that Jesus Christ, right? Jesus Christ was not crucified on the cross. Uh-oh. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. Did you catch it? Instead, the text says that Simon of Cyrene was mistaken for Jesus. <laughs> so someone else, someone else was crucified in the place of Jesus. Did you catch it? And Jesus is described as standing by and laughing at the ignorance. So Muhammad, guys, here's the thing. We know that Waraqa bin Nofal, guys, remember the hadith that we often quote? Waraqa bin Nofal was translating Aramaic writings including the Injil the, Gnos the gospel right he was translating it from the Aramaic to Arabic so Muhammad had actually access to these Gnostic writing right from the third century remember Muhammad was a merchant working under the richest woman in Mecca Khadija his wife right so he had access to these Gnostic writings right and he had access to this so-called second treatise of the great Seth that used to circle around in the Arabic world, around the Mediterranean Sea. Did you catch it? So Muhammad heard, must have heard the story that was much earlier before Islam. And he, he had access to it and he put it in the Quran. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ Right? وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكَنْ شُبِّهَا لَهُمْ And they did not kill him nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble to them. Right? Another was made that resembled to them. And here you see basically Muhammad is copy-pasting, right? Someone else. You know, if you go to the seer of Islamic scholars, they are mentioning Simon of Cyrene. Other scholars are mentioning Judas, right? So they are even confused who this so-called guy is that was crucified instead of Jesus. And we know simply that Muhammad borrowed it or basically stole it from this Gnostic writing, putting it in chapter 4, ayah 157, right? Did you catch it? Disaster upon disaster. Right? How many times did, did we tell you before, guys? Muhammad basically came with nothing new. We already knew about this Gnostic writings. We knew about the legend stories. This is why Muhammad is over and over and over accused by the people in the Quran. You can find the ayahs in the Quran accused to be nothing but a majnoon, someone who is stealing asatir al awwaleen. He is stealing, stealing the stories. The legend stories, the asatir of the ones before him, like this one that was before him, right? From the third century, right? This is why Muhammad is being accused in the Quran over and over to be stealing stories of people before him, like the second treaties of the Great Set, right? Guys, please take notes. Let me give you the link. You can read about it, right? You can read about it after the live show. Bookmark it, save it. And this is basically the story that Muhammad adopted and put in the Quran in chapter 4, ayah 157. If we go to uh, another chapter of the Quran, guys. This is chapter 19, ayah 15. Chapter 19, Surah Maryam. Surah Maryam, chapter 19, ayah 15. And peace be upon him the day he was born, and the day he dies, and the day he is raised alive. Now, who is this talking about, guys? Who is this talking about? This is talking about John the Baptist. 
if we scroll back guys Allah said oh John did you catch it so it's talking about John the Baptist right this verse this ayah is talking about John the Baptist now pay the attention guys it says peace be upon him the day he was born and the day he dies and the day he is raised alive right three events basically when he is born the day he dies and the day he is raised alive now <laughs> if we read a couple ayahs after we can find in chapter the same chapter right Look, chapter 19, chapter 19, ayah 33, here this is talking about Jesus. And peace is on me the day I was born, and the day I will die, and the day I'm raised alive. You see, again, three events, when he is born, and when he will die, and when he is raised alive. Now this is supposedly, guys, here Jesus is being a baby. He is talking as an infant, according to the Islamic story in the Quran. He's a baby, right? He's talking from the cradle, right? So Jesus is saying, peace be upon me. I was born, the day I was born, the day I will die and raise the life. So this is, not, this is actually not refuting the real historical crucifixion, right? And resurrection, because Jesus is here talking as a baby. And if you compare it, it's the same ayah basically. The same ayah of John, right? John here is being born. He will die and he will be raised alive. Here, same, same story. Jesus is born. He will die and he will be raised alive. Right? Copy paste. But this is talking about John. The Baptist, this is talking about Jesus. Now, basically, here's the Islamic logic, guys. <laughs> here's the Islamic logic. According to the Muslims, Jesus did not die. But John did die. Did you catch it? Jesus did not die, but John did die. But if you compare the ayahs, it's the same ayah, copy-paste. Did you catch it? So how can Jesus not die and we showed you remember from the second treatise of the great set that Muhammad basically stole the story and put it in the Quran but Muslims are confused and they say without any shame without any historical proof without any evidence that Jesus did not die so they are trying to refute the New Testament claim that Jesus did die and resurrected on the third day right but if we go back to the Quran and we compare the stories of John and Jesus, from the same chapter, chapter 19, we can conclude that actually it is false what the Muslims claim. We can put a big cross on this. This is a huge error. So basically Jesus did die according to the ayahs. And John did die. Right? Did you catch it guys? Uh oh. Right? The Quran is against you Muslims and to prove it guys, to prove that they have no clue what they are talking about, if we go to the Quran, chapter 3, if we go to the Quran, Ali Amran, chapter 3, ayah 55, Surat Ali Amran, mentioned when Allah said, O oh Jesus, indeed I will take you and raise you to myself. So the word here for raising, according to this liar and deceiver of the Quran raising is mutuafika but that's not what raising mean or to raise in Arabic mutuafika means I will cause you to die I will cause you to die and let me prove it to you Google Translate tawafi died did you catch it it's death Right? And if we go to another ayah, chapter 2, from the Quran, ayah 234. Here, the same, basically the same verb. And as for those of you who die, did you catch it? It's the same word. Let me play it for you. Guys, let me play it for you. Again. 
Pay attention to the second word. Yatawafona. Did you catch it? Tawafi. Tawaf. Tawaf. Tawafi. Tawafi. Did you catch it? Let me play this again. Sorry. So it's die, right? It's death. It's talking about death. So why do they play with the translation? Lying about the translation. It doesn't say raise. It says I will take you and make you die. Basically cause you to die. That's the real meaning of mutawafika. For example, when I say guys, my father died. Abuya tawaffa. Did you catch it? Abuya tawaffa. My father died. Abuya tawaffa. Mutawafika. Tawaffa. Mutawafika. Did you catch it? Tawaffi died. Uh oh. You see how they are lying, guys, to you? So the Quran actually confirms in many chapters of the Quran that Jesus actually did die. But you, unfortunately, you need to know Arabic. You see how important it is to know Arabic? To refute and expose the lies in the translations? You see how important it is, guys? Putting to death. Right? So it should be, I will take you and put you to death. Right? There's nothing called race. Mutawafika. Causing you to die. Right? And the proof is in front of you. So why why do Muslims always lie? Why? Why? Tell me. So actually, they say Jesus did not die, but it's a lie. It's a lie. And we showed you. Jesus actually did die according to the Quran. The real Arabic Quran. Always, you know, they always say, please, you have to go back to the Arabic Quran. You can't use translations. Well, we, we, we just went there, right? We just went to the Arabic Quran and showed you that actually Jesus did die. Right? So Jesus, guys, actually did die and he is erected and he is alive with the Father in heaven. Glory to his name. Right? Not only that, guys, not only that, not only that, if we go to people who actually lived in the time of the apostles. Have you ever heard of Josephus, guys? Josephus, in the testimonium of Lavinium, meaning the testimony of Lavius Josephus, who was a historian, right? A historian very important historian, is a passage found, so in his testimony, a passage was found in book 18, chapter 3 of the Antiquities, which describes the condemnation and crucifixion of Jesus. So guys, we have actually historical evidence of that time that Jesus actually was crucified. Did you catch it? But 600 years later, after the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, Muhammad 600 years come and denies all the historical evidence that we have. We have so many, guys, we have overwhelming evidence that the crucifixion of Jesus is a historical event, a historical fact. Muhammad didn't see Jesus. Muhammad lived 600 years after Jesus. He never knew Jesus. He never ate or, or, or stood or sat with Jesus. He has no clue who Jesus is, but he comes with his fabricated ayahs, the fabricated book of Allah, the Quran, to lie about the historical fact, like the crucifixion that is mentioned by a historian like Josephus. Did you catch it? So, he is describing, Josephus is describing the condemnation and crucifixion. Did you hear it, Muslims? 
of Jesus at the hands of the Roman authorities. Right? Guys, we just found, we just found a huge bomb that we can drop on the Quran. Right? We just found a huge bomb that we can drop on the Quran. Here it says that Jesus died at the hands of the Roman authorities, right? If we go back, uh, let's see, where was that? If we go back to that chapter, guys, chapter 4, ayah 157, it says that the Jews are saying, we killed the Messiah. Uh-oh. Jews never claimed that they killed the Messiah. They are still waiting for the Messiah, right? And it says, and they, who the Jews, and they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second here. If we go back, it says the historical account, the historical evidence that we have from Josephus is saying that Jesus died at the hand of the Romans, right? He died at the hands of the Roman authorities, at the hand of the Romans, right? But here it says that the Jews did not kill him or, or crucified him. Guys, the Quran is against the historical evidence that the crucifixion was only under the authority of the Roman, the Roman Empire. The Jews never crucified anyone, right? The Jews never crucified anyone. It was a Roman punishment, right? A Roman punishment. And not only did the Quran made a huge problem here for itself and for the Muslims. Muslims, you have to deal with this, right? You have to deal with this. Eat it, swallow it. Don't forget to digest it. Right? Not only that, it says they did not kill him. Last time I checked, guys, last time I checked, the Romans never put people dead on the cross. Say, they, the Romans never killed someone and then put him on the cross, right? But here the Quran is, say, is saying they did not kill him. So, according to the Quran, the Jews are claiming that they first killed Jesus and then they are putting him on the cross which is another historical error, huge historical error. The Romans never put people being dead on the cross. No, they first put them on the cross and normal, normally they, from their sufferings, they uh, died a couple hours or days from their suffering, from their misery, from the pain, right? From being very tired without any energy left, right? So they died from the pain, misery, etc., etc., right? But the Quran is claiming, the Quran is claiming that the Jews, they are claiming that the Jews said they first kill him and then they put him on the cross, which is another huge, huge mistake. And as we mentioned earlier, the Jews never claimed that they have killed the Messiah. They are still waiting for the Messiah. So how can they make this claim that is false in this ayah? This ayah, we can put a big cross on it. Not did we just show you that this is nothing but a fabrication. Stealing it from the great Seth, the second treatise of the great Seth. But also it is against history. Right? And Josephus is spanking the Quran, a very well-known historian of his time, right? Right. So we should thank Allah for a guy like Josephus who is spanking the Quran of Allah. Thank you, Allah, for putting someone like Josephus <laughs> on this planet to spank your Quran, spank Islam. And we, don't, we didn't only have Josephus, right? To back up that there was someone called Jesus who died on the cross. We have also someone called Tacitus, another historian. The scholarly consensus is that Tacitus reference to the execution of Jesus by Pontius Pilate, right? 
is both authentic. So another historian, guys, claiming that there was someone called Jesus who died on the cross and of historical value. Did you catch it? So guys, basically history is against the Quran. It is the nightmare of Islam. It's the nightmare against Quran. History itself is nightmare for Islam. Muslims, you really need to wake up, right? So here, another historian, right? Who heard and wrote about the crucifixion of Jesus as an independent Roman source. So this is, this is basically the enemies, right? The enemies are writing about the crucifixion of Jesus. The Romans, right? Paul Eddy and Gregory Boyd argue that it is firmly established that Texas provides a non-Christian confirmation of the crucifixion of Jesus. See? So Muslims, you really need to dig deep in history to see that Islam is nothing but a lie created by the fake prophet of Islam, Muhammad, right? All evidence that we have, all the historical evidence that we have are exposing the lies, the Islamic lies, the Islamic logic that Jesus did not die, which is a huge lie. It's a error, error right? It's a historical error in the Quran. Huge, huge, huge historical error. And Muslims, you have to deal with this. You have to accept this. History is against your satanic man-made cult. Please wake up and come back home. Come back home to Jesus, your Lord and Savior. And as the Bible says, every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Deal with it, Muslims. You will answer for rejection for your rejection of Jesus as your Lord and Savior when Jesus come back. Please come back home. Please become a Christian like us. A follower of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Guys, by this we end uh, the teaching. Now we enter the live Q&A session. So if you have any questions, if we have any Abdul, let me open up my Skype. Maybe we will have an Abdul, a Muslim who is under Abdulism, a Muhammadan, or maybe we have the honor to have an Ustaz or an Imam who can call us live and refute our today's teaching, right? So guys, we showed you basically that Allah is changing his mind every time. Once he's saying... He sent rain on the people of Lut. He basically, I think, I think he ordered Jibril to bake some pot, pottery, right? Some pottery, right? To throw it down from heaven. Was it maybe gravel, a gravel storm or a storm of stone? What, what is it, Allah? Please make up your mind, right? Were you throwing with these? Did you order Jibril to bake some clay and hurl it at the people of Lut? Right? Can we just pick and choose now? Come on, guys. What is it? Was it rain? As you see here in the background? Was it big clay? Was it gravel storm? Storm of stones? Allahu alam. No answer. Right? And we also showed you that the biblical Haman, he was in, living in Persia during the Jews who were in exile in Persia. But the Quranic false claim, which is nothing but an error, is describing Haman to be living in the time of Moses and Pharaoh, right? Right? And we also showed you that the Quran is speaking of a tower in the time of Pharaoh, where Pharaoh is ordering Haman. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I had to put LOL here. 
who is ordering Haman to build for him a tower so he can see the God of Moses. Well, Muhammad w was confused about the real biblical story that is talking about the Tower of Babel, right? And we refuted the Islamic logic and claim that Jesus did not die, right? By comparing both the stories of John the Baptist, who they call Yahya. We never heard of Yahya, by the way, but let it go, let it go. Showing you from the Quran itself that both John and Jesus are sharing the same story from chapter 19, ayahs 15 and 33, right? And we showed you very, very strong historical evidence that this is nothing but an error created by Muhammad for his own sexual desires and power hunger to basically create another cult to be the king of his time, waging war to kill men, take their women, take them as sex slaves, right? Lying, promising empty promises to his followers that there are 72 virgins waiting for you when you die for Allah's cause, dying for Islam, right? Empty promises that are nothing, empty promises of Satan himself. And we know Muhammad is the apostle, he is the Rasul, he is the fake prophet, he is the prophet of Satan himself, who is nothing but another guy called Allah in disguise. It's Satan. It's a cult. And today we proved it to you. Right? Yes, Abd Haliga. Muhammad is in his Quran. Guys, Muhammad in his Quran is speaking of Pharaoh. This is chapter 28, guys. Ayah 38. Here in this ayah, Pharaoh is ordering Haman to bake some mud, right? Bake some mud and make for him a tower, right? Why? So that Pharaoh can see God of Moses. But this is a false story. This story never happened. This is an error, right? This is the tower. The real story is the Tower of Babel, right? So, Muhammad is actually very confused, right? <laughs> Do we have any sheikh? Do we have any imam? Do we have any sheikh? Yeah, big the mud, yeah. Basically the clay. <clears throat> Do we have any imam? Do we have any sheikh? Do we have any ustaz who has the courage? Or the knowledge to call us on Skype. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Where are the Imams when you need them? Guys, don't forget to keep us in your prayers. Keep also our beloved admins in your prayers. We really need your prayers, guys. Pray for us so we can stay healthy and provide for you, Lord willing, many amazing live shows like today's live show and also don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button like it's possessed by jinn and also click also on the notification bell to re receive notifications when we go live right do we have any question in the text guys since there are no muslims who are calling let me try to answer one of your questions in the chat Are there any questions? Do you have any anything to share with us? Hello, Lydia and Nello. Welcome, Michelle. Most used, most used guys is a really amazing uh, guy, a really dear brother of mine. Also, Lydia from Paul Talk, who are really very good friends of mine. Sukmidih, Midih, Ivika, all of you, 
God bless you and your families. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here and supporting our work. And we are only doing this, guys, not for ourselves, but for the truth. And only the truth will set us free. We are doing this to show Muslims that they are nothing but victims of this dark sex cult of Muhammad called Islam. Please come back home, people. Muslims, please come back home. Because today, if you're going to rewatch the video again, if you really care about your salvation, and you will find that Muhammad was actually wrong in his man-made book called the Quran. We showed you so many evidence today that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. Well, Abdul Haliga, Asatir and Awaleen is referring basically to people who came to Muhammad, right? Asatir al Awaleen. They were accusing Muhammad in the Quran, it's mentioned in the Quran in at least three ayahs that he is called a Majnoon, a mad poet. Muhammad is called a Majnoon. Guys, Majnoon in Arabic means someone who is possessed by jinn, right? So they were accusing him to be a madman who was possessed by jinn. They were accusing Muhammad, you are stealing from Asatir al Awaleen. Asatir means legend stories. So Muhammad was accused by people. Hey, my friend, you are not telling us anything new. We already know about those legend stories. You are nothing but copying them and putting them in the Quran. Most use the honor is all mine, my friend. God bless you. God bless your family, your wife. Majnoon is crazy. Yes, yeah, someone who is possessed by a jinn, right? Yes. Andrew Martin, chapter 23, ayah 25. Let me go to there to show you guys. <clears throat> 23, ayah 25. Let me put it on the screen for you guys. Thank you for providing the ayah, my friend. You see, this is chapter Al-Mu'minu, the believers. Chapter 23, Ayah 25, he is only a madman. This is talking about Muhammad, right? So the people are accusing Muhammad to be nothing but a madman, a crazy person, a majnoon, right? A majnoon. So bear with him for time, right? Right? Oof, 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 yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> someone really made a nice claim. Rob Christian, can Muslims build a tower high enough to reach Allah? They've built Burj Khalifa. Do you think they will manage to reach Allah? Well, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know why they are. These Arabs are really Majanin, man. That's basically the plural of Majnoon, right? Singular Majnoon. Maj Majanin. Plural, they are Majanin. I don't know what, why they are building all these high towers like Burj Khalifa in, uh, uh, in the United Emirates, right? In Dubai and whatnot. Not only that, guys, have you seen the Satan Satanic Tower in Mecca? Have you seen it? Did you see, did you see it, guys? They are actually, let me show you. They have actually built the Tower of Satan. You see the devil horns here? Do you see it? They are actually replicating <laughs> the story of Haman. And you see how Satan with his house, his satanic house, is watching <laughs> the Kaaba of Allah. <laughs> He's watching over his own... <laughs> house <laughs> you see the Kaaba is the house of Satan and you see the devil big brother is watching you Muslims <laughs> Lord <of> mercy <laughs> so basically you know 
the Muslims are trying to get have their own Big Ben, right? B the Big Ben of London. They want to replace the Big Ben in London with their own tower. And so they build their own <laughs> house of Satan who is watching over his little small black box. <laughs> Lord have mercy. These people are really Majaneen. They are madmen. Possessed by jinn, yeah. Lord of mercy. Yeah, it looks like the Eye of Sauron from Rings the <laughs> Lord of the Ring movies, right guys? <laughs> Do we have any Muslim? <laughs> guys, you are killing me here. You are killing me with your jokes. You people got jokes, man, today. What's wrong with you, man? I hope you ate your seven ajwas this morning, guys. Come on. Yeah. So basically, Allah is Sauron. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Tower of Satan, yeah. Who is watching over his second house here, the Kaaba. You see? Big brother is watching you, Muslims. I mean, Satan. Yeah. Satan... Alam, uh, Allahu Alam, right? Do we have any Shaykh? Do we have any Ustaz from Indonesia who can refute Rob Christian? God bless you, my friend. God bless you too. Well, uh, someone is asking about Rahib Buhaira, right? Rahib Buhaira, right? This was a heretical monk, Zukmidi. He was a heretical monk who was kicked out of church, right? He kicked out of church and he basically was part of the story, right? In the beginning of uh, the creating of Islam, right? You had uh, the monk Buhaira, you had Khadija, who really wished that her husband became a prophet. If you go to to the early biography, you'll find that actually the biography about the life of Muhammad, you'll find that Khadija really was hoping, right? She was hoping that her husband would become the prophet of the Arabic world, right? The prophet of the Arab nation. So she was the one who was sending him, who Muhammad, to Kaif Hira, so maybe, maybe, maybe the moon god Allah would give him some divine revelation, right? So actually, they already were worshipping Allah who was nothing but a moon idol in the pre-Islamic world, right? In the pagan pre-Islamic world, to be specific. So this Rahab Buhaira, together with Waraka, the cousin of Khadija, and Khadija, created Islam. It was an inside job. It was basically a plan to make Muhammad, who was the husband of the richest woman of Mecca, to make him a prophet, right? So in combination with Waraka, Rahab Buhaira and Waraka, they used to translate the gospel, who they had access to, they used to translate the gospel from Aramaic to Arabic and they used to fabricate ayahs to give him to give them to Muhammad. This is what this is why when Muhammad was in Mecca guys pay attention this is why when Muhammad was in Mecca he was not violent. But when Waraka died when Rah Buhaira died right when the monk Buhaira died when Waraka died when Khadija died and he went to Medina he started to become a warlord and he changed his ideology, his man-made ideology, which is called Islam, 180 degrees. First, he was really peaceful when he was in Mecca, right? He tried to reconcile with the pagan Meccans, right? But when he went to Medina and he guarded himself in army of thugs, he became very violent. And chapter 9, which is one of the last chapters, some scholars even claim that chapter 9, which is basically uh, the chapter of the sword, which they call chapter at Toba, 
this chapter of the sword chapter 9 on itself guys chapter 9 on itself abrogated 120 peaceful Meccan ayahs so you can find 120 peaceful ayahs still in the Quran but Muslims cannot use them anymore because so-called Allah we know it's Muhammad abrogated those Meccan period ayahs boom right let me show you, for example, right, an ayah that you cannot use anymore as a Muslim. Bear with me, guys. Uh, chapter 2, let me go to it. <clears throat> chapter 2, ayah 256, I believe that's the one. For example, guys, this ayah that you see here, chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, the chapter of the cow, there shall be no compulsion in religion. Right? La ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion in religion. Basically, you are allowed, according to this ayah, to have your own religion beside Islam. So you can be a Christian, you can be a Sabian, you can be a Jew. But Muhammad abrogated this ayah, so it's still in the Quran. You see, this is the Quran, right? You, you are not allowed to use this anymore as a Muslim, right? This ayah is uh, abrogated. Let me prove it to you guys. Let me prove it to you that this ayah has been abrogated by Muhammad himself. Who, who he claimed that it was Allah abrogating it, right? You see, this is... Altafsir.com. This is owned. This website is owned by the Kingdom of Jordan, by the King himself, right? If we go to this tafsir and we scroll down and we click on the page two, you can read the following with me. This was before the Messenger of Allah, bless him and give him peace. Allah is praying on Muhammad was commanded to fight the people of the book. But then Allah saying, there is no compulsion in religion. Was, what? That ayah was abrogated. Did you catch it? It was abrogated. Same chapter, right? Chapter 2, ayah 256, right? So Muslims cannot use it. You see, it's still in the Quran, but because of chapter 9, right, it is abrogated. And if you continue reading, and the Prophet was commanded to fight the people of the book. Who are the people of the book? To the audience. Question. Who are the people of the book? According to the Quran. Who are the people of the book? Hopefully you have paid attention. Who is us? The Jews and the Christians, right guys? Yes, the Jews and the Christians. Thank you. Yeah, Abdul Halika got it right. Zuk Midih, Midih has, has it right. Yes, the Jews and the Christians. So, what does it say? The Prophet was commanded to fight the people of the book in Surah Repentance. Which is that? That's chapter 9, right? Remember, chapter 9, Surah at tawbah it's in front of you, right? Surah Repentance, chapter at Tawbah. Uh, repentance, you, you see it? Surah at Tawbah, Surah, chap, chapter 9, Surah at Repentance. And if we scroll down, uh, I think it's 9.5. And also mentioned in 929, but let me go first to 95. Here, Muhammad is commanding the Muslims. You know, Muhammad created this, right? There's nothing called Allah. And when the sacred months have passed, then kill the pagans, right? The polytheists, wherever you find them. You see? So, <laughs> in chapter 2, guys, we just showed you earlier in chapter 2, ayah 256, you... 
are allowed to practice your religion, right? As a pagan, as a Jew, as a Christian. But here in chapter 9, Muhammad is ordering to kill the pagans. So you're not allowed to practice your religion anymore. You cannot be a pagan anymore. You have to accept Muhammad as the prophet of Islam and you have to accept Allah, right? And if we scroll down, chapter 9, Ayah 28 and 29, this is 29. Fight those who do not believe in Allah or the last day and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful and who do not adapt the religion of truth, which is Islam from those who are given the scripture. Who are those? That's the Jews and the Christians, right? Remember, it says, the Prophet was commanded to fight the people of the book in Surah Repentance. But this ayah, chapter Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah 256, has been abrogated, right? And the proof is in front of you. Now, you had this Shushu or Shamsi, whatever his name is. Maybe you have watched uh, some uh, Speaker's Corner debates, guys, from Hatun, our dear sister Hatun, or... Daniel or Jay Smith, this Shushu guy and many others like him were claiming that the ayah is not abrogated. You filthy liars and deceivers. What else is new? Shamshi, yeah, Shamshi, Shushu, whatever his name is. Abbas. You see the liars? They are lying. Do you know better than Azbab and Zubar al Wahid? <laughs> Who are you people, really, man? Who are you? These are your high. high your most high scholars who are mentioning that the ayah has been abrogated. Not only that one, guys. Not only that one. Even this complete entire chapter that I think people like uh, Christian Prince love to mention. Say, O oh unbelievers, I do not serve what you serve. Oh, that's a fall, really bad translation. Anyway, nor do you serve him who I serve. No, am I going to serve that which you serve? No, are you going to serve him who I serve? You shall have your religion and I shall have my religion. This entire chapter has been abrogated by chapter 9. So it's still in the Quran, but Muslims cannot use it anymore. <laughs> right? Because only Islam is allowed on this planet. Right? Only Islam is allowed on this planet. You have to fight everyone. Fight who do, those who do not believe. Right? You see the abrogation? So this chapter, guys, abrogated, like I said, this entire chapter abrogated at least 120 so-called peaceful Meccan period ions. Right? And how is it possible? How is it possible? I mean, here comes the one million dollar question. How is it possible? How is it possible to call Allah God while God of the is Muslims of the Muhammadans are is changing his mind every time? How can God think with me here guys? Are you with me guys? Think with me. How can you be God but send down a verse, an ayah, but moments later you change your mind like a kid in a candy store? Abrogating your own words by sending new words. That is madness. That cannot be God. Our true God, the true living God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob will never ever change his mind. Else, God forbid, he cannot be God. You cannot be God and change your mind every time like in Islam. Sending down ayahs, right? Like this entire chapter that we just talked about. Counseling your own words by sending down a complete chapter much later. Changing your mind. Allah, please make up your mind. Why are you sending an entire chapter, abrogating it by chapter 9? Why Allah, why? Allah, please make up your mind, man. Please make up your mind. And like we showed you, Allah is not really consistent how he punished the people of Lord. 
Was he sending down rain from the heavens? Was he sending down baked clay like this pottery? Was he ordering Jibril to bake some pottery and hurl it down on the people of Lut? Or was it a gravel storm, maybe? Was it a storm of stones? I mean, when we ask Muslim, they say, Allahu A'lam, Allah knows best. What else is new? Right? So Allah is nothing but a kid in a candy store, changing his mind every second. Or, 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 or is it this one? Right? Do we have any Muslim? I mean, come on, man. We have been live for at least one hour and 11 minutes. And we don't have one Muslim. We have at least one dislike, guys. So we... We have at least one Muslim with us. Are you telling me Muslims cannot call us life and refute us? Uh, uh, Rob, Allah is going to give you virgins to freebie? What would I do with so many virgins, man? It's already hard enough to deal with one woman, man. You want me to have 72? 72? And they will all have big boobies? La habibi la. I don't know. I don't want it. You can keep them. Right? You can keep them. Freebie, yeah. We can give them to a Muslim, like, uh, I think freebie, you're a Muslim, right? Call me freebie, call me. Do you have any Muslim? I'm, I mean, 80,000 little servant boys? Why do I need young boys to, uh, to serve me? Why do I need so many women? Why should I go or believe in a brothel with a lot of women, young boys to serve me? Is this an empty promise of Allah again from Satan? Huh? I mean, we showed you, uh, you know, Big Brother is watching you. Why do you want to serve? Satan, I mean, it's in front of you. Lovely horns of Satan watching over with, from his secondary. And basically, this is a hotel, guys, right? This is like a six-star hotel. You know, you have to pay big money. A lot of uh, dinars. A lot of money to stay here so you can watch over from this tower of Satan to his primary house, right? The house of Satan here, right? You know, when I see this picture, guys, it always reminds me of chapter 105, guys. Right? It reminds me of this chapter, chapter 105, Al-Fil, the elephant. Have you not considered how your Lord dealt with the companions of the elef elephant? So basically, this is talking about the story that an army of elephant marched into Mecca to attack Mecca. But what does Allah do? He sends, he sends a, his army bird army, his personal bird army with stones, tiny stones in, in their claws to hurl them down at the elephant army. I mean, this must be a true story. Elephants in the desert like Mecca. I mean, do you know how much an elephant needs water? How many gallons an elephant need? How many liters of water an elephant needs? And that's only for drinking. What about 
for his skin. You know, a elephant needs water for his skin, right? Else he will die. And if this is an army, where would you get the water from, guys? An army in Mecca, in a desert like Mecca? This must be a true story. Oof, oof, oof. How much liter do you need for one elephant, guys? 600 liters? Someone is saying 600 liters. Let me, let me search it in Google. How does, how many liters does an elephant need a day? An elephant in the wild can eat anywhere from 100, between 100 and 1000 pounds of vegetation in 16 hour period. The intestines of an elephant may be 90 meters, okay. An elephant in a day, an elephant can drink 50 gallons, which is 200 liters. Can you get me 200 liters from Mecca, guys? And that's just one for one elephant. One elephant. What about in an entire army of elephants? Where will you get the water from, guys? I mean, Mecca is a desert. So this story must be historically true, guys. Right? Historically true. <laughs> really? Muslims, really? Please, Muslims, use your brains. Please. Don't do it for me. Do it for yourselves. Save your skin, man. This is Sahih. Someone is saying this is Sahih. <laughs> so, Muslims really believe this is true? <laughs> Are you, are you kidding? You're not kidding, right? A miracle! A jazz! <laughs> Lord have mercy. Do we have any Muslim? Call me live on Skype. My Skype is the Arab Christian. Yeah, des desert elephants are really well known, right guys? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Longinus of Jerusalem. Especially in Mecca. Have you ever seen an elephant in Mecca? Deep. This is deep. Yeah. Have you seen an elephant in Mecca, guys? Maybe. I mean, it would be, have been more convincing if they were to have mentioned camels. I mean, camels can stay for a long time without water. But elephants? You can't be kidding, right? Fasting elephant, yeah. He was doing Ramadan, Carl. Those elephants were on Ramadan, right? They didn't drink, they didn't need food, you know? I mean, we showed you, guys, we showed you. One elephant, just one adult elephant, can have at least 200 liters, which is 50 gallons of water. He needs that, else he will die every day. Army of elephants? Do you have any Abdul who has the courage and the knowledge to call us live and refute us? Guys, are you enjoying yourselves today? Did you like our live show today? Do you have any recommendations, any advice, anything to share with us? Should we keep making such teachings about the historical mistakes. Is this a good topic, guys? I try to be, uh, you know, different every time, right? Right? Last time we showed you the many differences in the spelling of words in the Quran, right? We showed you how basically Allah was writing the names of his prophets wrong, right? We showed you that in Surah Al-Baqarah, the entire chapter, the name of Abraham, Ibrahim, is written differently than the rest of the chapters in the Quran, right? Here in chapter Al-Baqarah, Abraham or Ibrahim, as they call him, is written without the E here, as you see, right? You see it? So, in the rest of the chapters, Allah decided, 
Allah decided, guys, to write the name of Abraham wrong. Differently. So Allah, if you truly claim to be Allah, if Muhammad truly claims to be the servant of Allah, how can Allah, how can Allah call himself God and make such huge disasters in the Quran? Creating this mass confusion in the Quran. And this is only one example, right guys? We showed you many the last time. We showed you many like this. Here's another example, right? Ya ibn Ummi, O son of my mother. Here Allah in chapter 20, ayah 94, is writing like this, right? Chapter 20, ayah 94. Let me show you guys. Chapter 20, Ayah 94. So you will not say, Rob Christian is lying. No, no, I'm not lying, Habibi. Right? I hope, did I get the right one? Yeah, 2094. Here. Qul, qala, ya ibn ummi. It's written like this. Right? Do you see it? It's written like this. Let me make it bigger, guys. Do you see it? But if we go to Quran.com from the same chapter, let me go to Quran.com. And in this case, 2094. It is written like this. Do you see it? <laughs> so you see, let me go back to my screenshot. I only copy and pasted it to show you, right? So Allah, if you truly call yourself God, do you write, O oh son of my mother, like this? Ya ibn Ummi? Or like this, separated with alifs? Here you see the alif, which is basically the A, the alif, is missing, right? And this word is written without any separation, as one word, do you see it? Here, three different words, Ya ibn Ummi. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Which one is correct? If you guys, if you give this word to a Muslim guy, an Arabic-speaking Muslim guy who goes to college or university, if you give him this word, he can't read it. It's a disaster. Right? Today's way is this. So this Abdul, who is suffering from Abdulism, he tried to correct the Quran of Allah. So this guy, this moderator of this website, this is Quran.com. He tried to fix the disaster. Right? So he played with Allah's Quran because this is basically the true way. This is Quran.com, the official one, right? If you buy a Quran from the bookstore or you go to the mas masjid or mosque, you will find it written like this. Right? Yabn Ummi. Or Ummah, whatever, you know, you can read it as Yubna Ummah also, but it's Yabna Ummi basically. O son of my mother. So Allah, is it this one or is it this one? Right? What about this word? Samiri, chapter 20, ayah 95. Chapter 20, ayah 85. So only a couple of verses later, right? Same chapter again. Samiri, without an alif, here it's written with an alif. Forget about this first letter, it basically means O Samiri. So here, uh, you know, Allah is addressing the Samiri. But start reading from here, right? From here on. Samiri. But here there's no alif. And here you see an alif. So Allah. Which one is correct? Only one can be correct, right? Only one can be correct. You can't have both words. Only one is correct. So which one is it, guys? Muslims, which one is the correct one? Allah, where are you, man? He's not answering, guys. I think Allah is having a vacation. 
Maybe he went to the Bahis, to the Bahamas. I don't know. He's not answering. What can we do? Allahu A'lam, Muslims will say. Right? Let me show you another disaster. Here's another disaster. Sahir, a wizard. Chapter 51, ayah 39. Sahir. Couple verses later, couple ayahs later. Same chapter. 51, 51. Ayah 52 this time. Sahir with an alif. Do you see it? Do you see it? Let me go to chapter 51 to prove it. That I'm not lying. You know, we guys, we are not lying to you, you know, right? Uh, 52 and 39. This is 52, guys. This is 52. Here, you see the word, right? With an elif. You see it? This is the elif. Sahar, a magician or a wizard. Right? Now, if we go to the same website, but to the, to the different ayah. Oh. What was it? 52 and 39. Okay. This one was 52. You see it? Let me go. To thirty nine. Oh wait, this is not the right one. Why? Thirty nine. Oh, fifty one. Sorry, guys, fifty one. I'm making some mistakes here. What can we do here? Sahar without an elf, right? With an elif, you see it? You see the elif here? Without an elif, same word. Uh oh, right? Same chapter, thirty-nine. Without an elif, here. With an elif. So Allah, please make up your mind, right? Make up your mind, Allah. Which one is it? Only one can be correct. Do we have an Imam who can address these disaster in the grammar? Disasters upon disasters. No answer. Allahu A'lam. That's what their answer would have been. You know, guys, we have been asking in the Arabic world, we have been asking the Imams, why are you not fixing these things you know what we get we get two answers guys pay attention their two answers are are you telling us that we need to fix this while we are reading this for the last 1400 years so that's their basically they're asking their answer is basically a question <laughs> another answer will be the second answer will be it's a jazz it's a miracle so the disasters that you see here are miracles of Allah, guys. You see the amazing answers from the Muslim Abduls in the Arabic world. And they are scared to death. There is no sheikh who will stand up and try to correct these mistakes. I mean, Uthman did it, guys. Uthman did it in the... 7th century, Uthman burned the Quran. And he created only one Quran, right? He burned six ways and he only kept one, right? Which was the copy of Zayd, right? He ordered Zayd ibn Thabit to make a so-called perfect copy. And he sent nine copies to different nine regions that were under the Islamic rule. When we ask a Muslim, can you show us the Quran from the Uthmanic period, from the 7th century? It's, they say, we don't have it. They claim they have it, but they, they can't show it to us, right? There is no Uthman, Uthmanic Quran. It's gone. It's missing. Right? It's missing. So what did Uthman do? He burned six of the seven, and he only kept one. So when Uthman can burn the Quran, correct the Quranic mistakes, I mean, why would you burn Qur'ans? Because there were many mistakes, right? <laughs> so if Uthman can do it, why are you Muslims not doing it now? Right? 
And guys, the disasters that we are showing you on the screen are from the Hafs Quran, right? This is not the Duri Quran. This is not the Warsh Quran, right? This is not the Qalun Quran or Al Bazi or the many different Qurans that are existing in this world, right? There are more than 32 different Quranic versions, different Quranic versions. But we are only talking about the Hafs Quran, which is the most used Quran version in the world. So Muslims, there is no Quran anymore. There's only the Hafs recitation, the recitation of Hafs, right? And we showed you last time that you are using the Quran recitation of a liar. Someone who was nothing but a liar, right? Hafs is a liar, right? Al Bukhari, guys, Al Bukhari says, Waqal al Bukhari, Tarakuhu, Waqala Sahih Muslim, Imam Muslim, Matruk, he is rejected. Waqal al Nisai, Laysa bi thiqa. He is not to be trusted. He is not trustworthy. And another guy says, Laysa bi thiqa. You see, it's in front of you. They are calling, all calling him a liar. He is not to be trusted. So Muslims, why are you using the Quran recitation of Hafs, who came 200 years after your fake prophet? Why would you use the Quranic recitation of a guy who's nothing but a liar. Someone who is not to be trusted. <laughs> I, uh, guys, I, it really amazes me. Yeah, Hafs the liar, that's his, that was his nickname. Hafs the liar. Hafs the one who should not be trusted, right? And those are not my claims. Those are the, the claims of the highest issue. I mean, have you ever heard of Imam Al-Bukhari? This is Al-Bukhari speaking. This is Muslim speaking. Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, right? The guys who wrote Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari. And Nisai, the third guy from the six most authentic collection of Hadith books, right? Three of the six say that. This is another of Christian speaking. And Nisai, right? So three of, out of the six are claiming that, right? And the proof is in front of you. Muslims wake up, man. Today we showed you the many historical disasters and errors, and we showed you many contradictions. Please wake up, leave Islam, drop Muhammad, He's nothing but a fake prophet. Please come back home to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to his name. Please come back home. Guys, please don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button. Destroy it. And also click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Guys, I think we should wrap this up. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your amazing support every time we go live. God bless you and your families. Keep us and our, our admins in your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. Keep supporting us. Thank you for watching. God bless you. See you, Lord willing, again very soon. Jesus is Lord and Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet and Islam is a man-made Cold. Thank you for watching and God bless.